Hello, on this video, I'm going to talk about Python's list. So a list is a data structure that it can use to store values. What we're interested when it comes to list is a place where it stores the values and also the index. So the index is like the address of a location where you store a value. So the index of this location here would be zero the index of this location will be one and so on. And inside each location, you can store anything you wanna store, such as a integer, a string, a Boolean, and even an object. So here's some of the characteristics of the list. It does not need to be homogeneous. In other words, you can store anything you wanna store. You can change that at any time. It's a zero indexed, data structure and you can also allow for duplicates so let's take a look at some of the things that you can do with a list for that let's write some code All right so here I have my idea Lee and the first thing we're gonna do is to create a list so to create a list we can just create a list and assign some values so here I have a list with three values and each value happens to be an integer in this case, and the index of this one would be zero, the index of this value would be one, and the index of this value would be two. And if I wanna print this list, all I have to do is to print the list. I'm going to run the program, and here you have the one, three, and four. You can also print a single item of this list. So instead of printing the whole list, you can print the item on the index number one. So if I do that, it's gonna print the number three because three happens to be on index number one. If I run it, I get three. And I can also print the index number two and the index number two would be the number four in this case. And if I try to print the index number three, it's gonna give me an error. And the reason is because index number three does not exist. Index zero, one, and two, and number three does not exist. So I'm gonna print the index zero here again, and it's gonna print the number one. Now, if I decided to print the index number negative one, you will not get a error like we had before here. Instead, you get the number four. If you do a negative here, instead of going this side of the list, it goes back to the end and it starts coming from the end to the beginning. So if you print list negative one, you're gonna get number four. And if you put negative two, you get number three. And if you put number th three here for the index, you're gonna get the value one. Now what happens if you do four, now we finally get a index out of range exception. So you can start from left to right or right to left but you cannot go more than the numbers that you have here on your list. So you can also print this in a loop. So I'm gonna write a loop for this. So now we have access to every single item in the list. So if I print this, I get every single item here. But one thing you cannot do here is to change a value that's inside the list. And the reason is because this is just a copy of the elements in the list. So if you try to change this item here, it will not work. And just to show you, I'm gonna print every single item from the list here on this for loop, but before I print it, I'm gonna change it to ABC. 
And you're going to see that the item gets changed, but the list doesn't. So because of that, once I print the list again on 14, then the items will be back to these values here. So here it is. I change the item, but the list remains unchanged. Now, what if I want to do a loop, but I want the ability to change the items in the list? So if that's the case, then we're going to find the indexes of, of this list, and then we're going to access the items through its index. So I'm going to create a range. And here, instead of putting my list, I need to put the number of the items that I have on the list. So for that, I'm going to use the len function. And the len function gives me the length of the list. So in this case now, if I want to change a value in the list, I can access the location of the list, change the value, and then I can print the value here just to show the new value that has changed. And then finally, I'm going to print it again. And this time, it is not going to print the 134 like it did before here. It is going to print the ABC. Because when you do this, you're actually changing the value on the address of where this is stored. So I'm going to run this. So there it is. So initially it was 134. And then this loop here changed the values of the list. And then when I print the whole thing, it printed the new values of the list. So in this case here, you actually change every single value of the list. All right, so let's move on. So now I'm going to show you how to add values to the list. And I'm going to print before and after I add the values just to show you that something actually got changed. So on the add values, I can append a value and then I'm going to add pair on the list. And if I run this, it printed 134 from line 8, and then line 11 added the pair, and then line 13 printed the whole list with the pair inserted now. So every time you use append, it adds on the end of your list. The other way you can add value is by using the function insert. So the insert requires you to give two parameters. One is the index and the other one is the object or whatever you're starting to insert. So in this case, I'm going to put zero comma the value on insert. So in this case, it will add the word pair in the beginning of the list. So if I run, I get pair in the beginning of the list. And I can change this number to any index I want. I'm going to put now index 2. And it adds right here. All right, so the next thing is to remove items from the list. And to do that, I'm going to use the del. The del will remove a item in the list. So this command here will remove whatever item you have on an index number 1. If I go to my list, index number one is number three. So this code here will remove the number three. And it removed the value three. And I can change that to zero, and it will remove the item on index zero. Now, this command here just removes the item. That's it. There's another command called pop, and the pop removes the item and also returns the item for you 
and you can print or save or do something that you want. So just for illustration here, I'm going to try to print this command. And if I do that, I get an error. I can't print this. So this command here only removes the item. Now, what I can do is to use the pop. And the pop will remove the last item of your list. So the last item of my list is number four. So the pop removes the number four and then returns it for you. So you can print the pop. So I'm going to run. And right here, line number eight, printed 134. Line number 11 popped the last item and it returned that. And when it returned here, I can print the value, which is number four. And then line 13 prints whatever it's left of your list. Now, another cool thing about the pop is that if you put an index right here, it will remove the item from that index. So I'm going to put number one here. And the number one is the index of number three. So when I run this, number three is gone and I'm left with one and four. All right. So another thing you can do with this list, you can pass it to a function. So I'm going to create a quick function right here just to print the list. So now if I call the print list, it sends the list over there as a parameter and it just prints it. So right here, instead of printing, I'm just going to call the function to print the list. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. So then this list goes as a parameter right here to this function and this function just prints it. So the last thing is to check if a item exists in the list. So I'm going to leave this function here for now. And right here, I'm going to check. So to check if a item is in the list, and I'm going to put a couple of more values right here. Just to make it more exciting. So to check if an item exists in the list, I'm going to do a if statement. So if, and then here is whatever item I'm looking for. So let's say I'm looking for the item pair. And I want to check if pair is inside this list here. So if I run this program now, it prints found it because pair is actually in this list and I can change this to pairs and then pairs does not exist in the list. So the found it never gets printed. This is how you check if a value is in the list and obviously you can change this for a variable. And that's a little bit prettier code and it functions just as well. All right. So thanks for watching this video. If you have a idea or a topic for a future video, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can.